How good are the hover drones from Zero Zero Robotics in capturing 3D models and 3D scanning using photogrammetry? I have all three of the Hover Air models that you can currently buy on the market. The Pro Max, the Pro, and the standard Hover Air. These drones are great little camera drones. Each of these features really good cameras. This last one right here actually has an 8K 48 megapixel sensor on the Pro Max, which would make it exceptionally good for photogrammetry. You have the standard Hover Pro, which features a 12 megapixel camera capable of shooting 4K 60 video, and the Hover Air Pro Max actually shoots 8K video at 30 FPS. The HDR video looks really good on this as well, and you get about 20 minutes of battery life with this small little battery here. Lastly is the original Hover Air. This is a 2.7K video and 12 megapixel for the pictures. This one has some differences, but the camera on this is okay, and it's also only a single axis gimbal. However, the image stabilization internally on this is rather good. This drone does not have the capability to utilize the beacon slash remote, which means also that this doesn't have any sort of GPS. So by not having any GPS internally here, it means that this drone can only fly up about 12 meters, which greatly hinders how well it can capture images for the purpose of photogrammetry and 3D model capture. So this is very limited in terms of the height that it can fly up, and also the camera is okay. You could probably make do if you were doing something rather small, but since you need to fly up so high in order to get those images for photogrammetry, it's going to be very difficult to use this drone. However, these other two drones, the Hover Air Pro and the Hover Air Pro Max, both of these drones have internal GPSs, will allow you to fly basically as high as you really need and gives you a lot more height and ability to zoom out. So that means that both these drones, I have a feeling, will produce rather good 3D models. There still is the major caveat though that even though these drones have GPS, gyroscopes and all that stuff, as well as gimbals, they will not include that metadata on the picture, which means that sometimes you will luck out and get a really good model, and sometimes you won't, and that's just because the pictures themselves have no georeferencing data. So the scale in which the basically the subject that you're looking at is, is really hard to determine and not really possible to get an accurate measurement based off this drone alone. However, overall, the model itself will look good, it's just you won't know how big it is and you won't be able to use any of the measurements on the model. So, without further ado, let's test each of these drones. I have a small little bathhouse that I like to capture, and it's also winter, which means that the leaves on the trees won't really cause any issues as well. So I'm going to attempt to make a model on all three of these drones, and I'm going to go through and fly all three of these drones around the building manually. Alternatively, if I wanted to focus on getting the kind of entry-level 3D modeling option, I would switch for the DJI Mini 4 Pro because it has the ability to use Waypoint Map, which is an automatic tool that will allow you to fly around something, pre-plan a flight plan, and it will basically fly it pre-made to capture the 3D model without having to manually do that. Versus these hover drones, I am actually having to manually fly these um, but the Mini 4 Pro also has that geo-reference data, so it has gyroscope data from the GPS loaded onto the metadata of the photos. So you have a lot more options in terms of picture capturing, and you can also get a really solid um, 3D model that you can actually measure from. And of course, this drone costs more, but at the same time, it's probably the bare bones entry level thing you can get for that purpose at the moment. Also, the beacon is really nice because you can actually go through and use this as a controller. So the controller I think is actually necessary because the ability to go through and fly each of these just with the inbuilt software from the phone is rather difficult. So having this beacon gives you the ability to attach your phone, but also fly this via joysticks, which makes it a little easier if you're having to manually capture stuff for photogrammetry rather than using a pre-made flight plan as you would with Waypoint Map. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna fly this, and we will take a look at the final model that is generated. So I tried going through and flying this mission with the Hover Air's app control and then also the Hover Air Pro and Pro Max's app control without the, the actual separate controller. And the Hover Air, the original model, was almost impossible. I don't know who made this user interface, but this user interface is extremely difficult to fly the drone manually. And you have the option of getting a little external RC. I did not have that. Um, but just using the app to try to fly the drone, which is on the left, is very difficult because the controllers are weird. You have like the controls are stacked 
vertically, it's very weird. And then also on the inverse of that, trying to use purely just the app for the Hover Air Pro and Pro Max is doable. It's a little easier, um, but there is, of course, a lot that you're still having to control. You don't have any type of knobs or anything like that to control the gimbal orientation. And of course, this is actually on the older firmware on the right here. So the right actually uh, is without the RC yet. And then I'm gonna switch over now and show you what it's like with the RC. And it's a lot smoother, especially having the sticks and being able to control it with the sticks as well as the gimbal's rotation with the knob on the top makes the flying experience, at least on this, a lot better in my opinion. And of course you can see the final results um, of that, of course, represented in the model. So first off, the original hover, the smallest one, did not produce a 3D model at all. Uh, was not useful uh, in that way whatsoever. I believe it just cannot fly high enough up to capture that 3D model. Um, the Hover Air Pro Max did produce a 3D model, but this one is not geo-referenced, and I think it just chose to go through and pick a really small area. Because if we measure this, this is half a meter. This is definitely a third of a meter. This building is definitely not a third of a meter. And so just because of this, it's produced kind of some wacky results. Versus here, I think this is going to show something ridiculous like... This is closer to accurate, but I believe still this is closer to like 10 meters, not so much 3.65. I mean, if we even go over here to like the, the I don't know, the this yard line in this football field here, you'll see that this is not entirely accurate as well. So basically the measurements are kind of out the window as expected. That's definitely not a four meter distance. That might be the length of maybe the the goal. So the measurements are, are useful at all. However, if you were just trying to capture this, maybe you wanted to 3D print this model or something, maybe a model of this park, offer that as like a service to somebody, I think it's doable. Even the one from the Pro Max, which you would think that the Pro would have a lower quality model, but this is the model of the Pro and then this is the Pro Max. Um, I think honestly, this is just a luck of the draw because this could have easily been the other way around where this was uh, the Pro Max had the higher quality model. I think that's just the issue with not having georeferenced data is that you really are kind of playing a uh, gambling game basically on whether or not the models will come out well. I do think overall I wish that they would add that georeference data because then that would make this a substantially higher quality model, especially since it does have that GPS. Of course, not when it doesn't have a GPS lock, but when it does have a GPS lock, it would make this drone very usable. And also having the ability to maybe circle a point would make this exceptional. So maybe you could select the center point and the drone will just fly around this point and capture all the pictures from that. And having maybe a time shot feature would make this drone substantially better for 3D modeling as well. So those are just two suggestions. I think you could get away with it. The problem is, again, just the unpredictability of that nature of just having the the model sometimes come out good and sometimes not. I think these drones specifically are much more better designed for situations in which you're just trying to capture you and not so much other people or other situations. So I think like if you're looking at like a landscape or kind of what this is, which is looking at a certain area um, and not really focused as like a selfie stick application, but more so um, focused in like a, on a scene, then that's of course where uh, I think you should definitely get consider getting a different drone, um, especially if that's your higher priority is having a scene capture rather than just using it as a selfie stick. I think this is a niche case for a lot of people. And I think the people that are buying the hover drone are buying it more for a selfie stick, more for something to capture memory memories and not so much they're using it as a professional um, video capture device, uh, at least doing work for other people, kind of like a freelance application, but I could be wrong. Um, definitely I will include both of these links, so the links to both the Hover Airs model and the Hover Air Pro Max models. Um, all the different models, so you can basically look at this model, you can hop on your browser and check this out and basically measure and take a look at what you're looking at. Um, yeah, so this should all be available for you to take a peek. And if you're interested in doing this, this is aerialmodel.com. Um, you basically just upload your pictures from your drone. You fly around it kind of in a circle. And uh, I have a whole bunch of videos on my channel kind of explaining how this works. And also Waypoint Map is a great tool if you have one of the DJI Waypoint drones that will allow you to go through and fly automated missions so you don't have to manually control it. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Check out the channel for other cool tech-related news, reviews, and videos, and see you next time. Goodbye.